uh, Airbus in the past uh, in terms of what we've done around alternative fuels, synthetic fuels. Um, we flew the first uh, synthetic flight on an A380 using Rolls-Royce engines with Shell. Um, it was a gas to liquid flight, 50-50 blend in one engine from Bristol to, to, to Toulouse, a three hour flight. No impacts in terms of aircraft performance whatsoever. And as soon as we have the, had the approval from ASTM for the, uh, in the actual standard to actually fly on a 50% blend of uh, aviation uh, sustainable alternative fuel, we flew with Qatar on a A340-600 uh, in November, uh, no, in October 2009. Uh, all four engines with all passengers on board flew, from six hour, flew for six hours from London to Doha, no issues whatsoever. But we've moved away now from alternative uh, fuel demonstration flights. Um, we're now moving into acting as a catalyst within Airbus to set up the industry in each uh, locations and or different locations around the world. What we mean by that is working with the, the farming community, the fuel companies, the refiners, and asking airlines to make commitments to make purchase low, uh, large quantities of biofuel today and trying to speed up the commercialization. At the moment, we see the industry is somewhere in the region of seven to ten years away, and for us, this is too slow we have to move much faster so we're really trying to play this catalyst role we've already uh, announced a project where we will fly on a biofuel in Brazil with Tam Air Airlines using Jatrofa uh, around uh, November 2010 to this year but that's not the interesting part of the project the interesting part of the project is around setting up the value chain and the commercialization in Brazil today so the issues we're facing in terms of commercialization today is one, we have to get to the stage where we go through a, a series of prioritization in terms of energy types. Uh, what we say is we believe that aviation should be prioritized for biofuels because we have no other solution today. Um, if we want to use hydrogen today, for example, that's 30 years away. We don't have the infrastructure, we don't have the capability to make it in these massive changes in terms of aircraft design. So what we're really looking for are biofuel drop-in solutions for our aviation today. We're looking for prioritization of transport modes. So for example, in the car industry, they have other solutions. Yeah? They can today use electricity, they can use uh, hydrogen uh, fuel cells. We don't have that luxury today that we have compared to other transport modes. So we believe electrification of the railways of the car industry is the way forward and biofuel prioritization for aviation is critical for us. This won't happen in a normal way if we just leave it to the general market. So we need incentives um, from the uh, governments and the European unions to make that happen. At the same time as well, we also recognize that we have a lot of research and development that's already in place. So why don't we implement that? Why don't we speed up that process and get commercialization as quickly as possible? At the same time, we also recognize that we have to continue in terms of producing uh, R&D activities, in terms of algae production, in terms of yeasts, and we have to carry on doing that research and maybe some of the funding from the ETS systems can actually do that for us. As we said before, we recognize that there are existing crops around the world, uh, crops like Jatropha, like Camelina, they actually exist today. And we believe that in Airbus you will have local crops in local areas and local jobs for local people. So we believe it's going to a mixture, be a mixture in terms of uh, solutions for different locations in different parts of the world. But we also recognize that the, the crops in terms of best potential today are around algae. But we also recognize in terms of yeasts and the fermentation process today that this could potentially be the future direction that we should be moving in with high yields and the capability to actually do this in different countries around the world because we've used these technologies before in the past it's not something new in terms of fermentation. So we see that these are the new areas of investigation and where we should actually be going and where we should be actually investing in terms of R&D.